All right, man, peace. You know, brothers, one of the great characteristics that we all need to have is mental stability, being well balanced. That's what's going to carry us through when we hit adverse conditions. In Proverbs 25 and 28, it tells us that a person who does not have control over their own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls, meaning it has no defenses. Anybody can raid that city, plunder it, and take what it wants. When it's easy for you to be manipulated or when you're somebody who becomes emotional or unstable due to provocation, that means that other people know how to get from you what they want when they want. And that brings us to Mr. Steph Curry, because in light of what we've seen transpire between Kevin Durant and Draymond Green, Steve Kerr has remembered that old thing. You know, sometimes in life we forget that old faithful, that old steady person. And this situation with Draymond and Kevin Durant has made Steve Kerr remember who he started out with. Who's the person who was the source of a lot of this success? That being Mr. Steph Curry. He's decided that he's going to compare Steph Curry to a smaller version of Tim Duncan. So, of course, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Let's talk about Steph Curry out for the next few games for the Warriors, dealing with that groin strain, as I mentioned earlier in the show. Once again, and I've stated this many times in the past, and I'm talking just from a two-dimensional perspective when we evaluate Steph Curry and some of these other athletes on Golden State. Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, they come from a patriarchal household. That's why they tend to be more stable-minded. They know how to deal with adversity better. They know how to deal with conundrums better. They know how to problem-solve better. Kevin Durant, Draymond Green are both around 30 years old, and they're just starting to understand manhood and how to restrain themselves and of course I'm just talking mostly about KD because Draymond Green has no understanding on how to do that and that's the damage that's caused in these matriarchal backgrounds you'll find this all the time most of these modern-day liberal women they have no concern over maintaining their decorum and it trickles down to their sons and as we know especially in this society a man who cannot control himself is in danger of being killed or or imprisoned while a woman who cannot control herself, oftentimes people just say, wow, that's a strong woman. She really stands up for herself. Or at worst, she has a funky attitude, leave her alone. But just getting back to the point, the correlation that Steve Curry is making between Tim Duncan and Steph Curry is his way of saying that this is Steph Curry's dynasty. This is not Kevin Durant's dynasty. This is not Draymond Green's dynasty. This is Steph Curry's dynasty. And that's the main reason why Kevin Durant is going to leave because he knows that he's the beta on this team. He's never going to be the alpha. And when he does leave this team, it's going to be in search of an understanding of whether or not he's actually an alpha or not. It's really not going to be to, to find success somewhere else because he's already found success. That's why he himself has stated that when he won the first championship, he thought that he was going to be far more content, but he still has not found it. Kevin Durant is not comfortable with who he is overall because he's not quite sure who he is overall in the NBA landscape. He's almost been cursed and gifted to the same extreme and that he's a beta but he has an alpha level of skill. So he's truly at a crossroads. Point being is this, you look at Steph Curry, Curry never seems flummoxed by anything because once again from a two-dimensional perspective he knows who he is. Still on the road trip, even though he is guaranteed not to play, according to Steve Kerr, what he provides off the court equally valuable to his on-court performance, which is saying something. Kerr said yesterday, quote, he's got the respect of everybody in the organization, on the team. He brings us together. Steph is the short Tim Duncan. In other words, Steve Kerr is saying if it was not for Steph Curry, I might not be able to do this job. Because I'd have to deal with all these mama's boys at once. Imagine if there was no Steph Curry on this team and it was just Draymond Green, Kevin Durant, and Boogie Cousins. Oh, man. Having played with Tim Duncan and having been through all kinds of stuff in San Antonio, when you have a guy like Tim, a guy like Steph Curry, it makes your whole world easier. In other words, that's Steve Kerr's way of saying, I cannot confront Draymond Green because this person has no respect for me. So I can have Steph Curry act as a proxy a representative and ambassador for myself and the front office to go speak to Draymond because we're so woke and we're so liberal Caucasian that we know that we cannot make a public show of disciplining these athletes too much or we're going to come off like the oppressor. 
So we have to ask Steph Curry to act as the intermediary. And that just goes to show you how desperate the Golden State Warriors front office was in giving Draymond Green that suspension and that fine because you know that's the last thing that they wanted to do. They did not want to bring down a hammer or a heavy hand on Draymond once again as it has already been noted throughout the mainstream sports media. Draymond Green threatened to kill Steve Kerr in that little dust up that they had at the halftime of the game between the Golden State Warriors and the Oklahoma City Thunder back in 2016. And they did not find or suspend him for that. So that shows you that they hold Kevin Durant in higher regard than even Steve Kerr. I love that video of them on the bench. I felt like it was really important. Again, if that had been all, oh, look at Steve and Tim. Not as laughing as much there. Um, that's amazing, Steve. Um, but yeah, I mean, Paul, a guy like that can change everything, right? I, mean, I don't really get it. Like, how do you say Tim Duncan? Because to me, Tim Duncan came off as like quiet to himself, personal. Like, Steph well, is more play with uh, him. I know. I Right, but Steve Kerr is not talking about a comparison of personalities, Paul Pierce. He's talking about a comparison of their role on the team. He acts as basically an extension of the head coach. That's what Steve Kerr is saying in regards to Steph Curry, and he's so stable-minded. Steve Kerr knows that he can always turn to Steph and receive a well-balanced report in regards to what his assessment is, Steph Curry's assessment of what's going on with the team. I know I didn't play with him, but you know, he just, you know, I look at Steph on the sideline and I see Tim Duncan on the sideline, yeah. you know, he's poker face, Tim Duncan, and Steph, you know, he, you know, he smiles, he shows emotion, but I think in this way he's saying is, is he's sort of like the mediator yeah. between yeah. everything off the court, you he's know, that guy, sitting he's in a the leader, middle, look everybody look. respects Steph, and when he speaks, he speaks volumes, and he's not on one side or the other, and he's right. like a median that everybody respects in that way, and I can see that. Yeah, yeah you know, Steven Jackson talks about all the time about how Tim Duncan, he, like, he didn't have to go around beating his chest. Mm -hmm. People just knew if Tim said it this way, then everybody else yeah, going to do it. Do it. I was on the radio with Antonio Daniels on the same thing. He's, right. He made the same comparison that Tim was the standard bearer for the locker room. So if Tim went that way, we all knew we're, he, he's our leader. He's the best right. player here. Right. We're all going to fall in line. With Steph, I see what you're saying, Paul. It is a different type of leadership because yeah. Steph is, when I think about when the Warriors are at their best, it's when they're having fun, they right? Enjoy, right? They're, That's they're, 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 the they're at their best when Steph Curry is hot from the outside. I can't remember if I've ever seen a player in the history of me watching basketball who could put teams away, at least in regards to regular season games who could put teams away with the efficiency and the proficiency of a Steph Curry. When he gets hot in those third quarters, the other team, they basically just wave the white flag. They're the first ones to synthesize joy, there you basketball go. quality, analytic. The, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the biggest uh, example is the Washington Wizards game, yes. where he's throwing the high up, like layups up into the sky, and he's shooting threes and running around and doing the yeah. airplane. Like, that's the Warriors, and that joy comes from him. And it is infectious. Everyone wants to feel like that. And so that's why he's so important. I'd just like to point out that for two straight games now, Boogie Cousins has been the peacemaker. Just think about that. Coming up. Tim has he really been the peacemaker or has he just been the guy who's saying to himself, no, you guys cannot come apart as I need to win this championship. I have to get my chip this year. You guys can fracture after I'm gone. But anyway, we'll see what happens after Steph comes back. He is the proverbial mama bear in the locker room. There's no doubt about that. So peace.